Hello and welcome to a special news episode. This episode is very topical at the moment and tells the truth about electric vehicle fires. There has been a big kerfuffle in South Korea this week about EV fires in underground parking garages, but I will discuss more on this and how this links to the key EV6 and Hyundai Group cars later. So I will start this episode with some actual facts about car fires and not the usual lies, BS and misinformation that gets bandied about when these things happen. This report from Fleet News gives the actual numbers using data gathered from Tusker Cars that analyses 30,000 electric vehicles. Fleet News says that Lloyd's own business claims that misinformation is being spread widely on social media and even being published by national newspapers. Yep, remember The Sun doing this in the Daily Mail and Telegraph quite a lot last year. One of the most commonly shared EV myths is that they regularly catch fire. While it's no secret that EV fires present an increased danger once the battery starts burning, that's for NMC batteries in particular. Tusker's data proves that, that the likelihood of an EV catching fire is significantly less than that of a petrol or diesel car. In fact, the company's insurance records show that not a single one of the EVs on its fleet have caught fire. Acknowledging that some fires are inevitable, not least due to arson, which is the cause of around 65% of car fires each year, Tusker Managing Director Kit Wisdom told Fleet News, we had two or three fires because somebody was smoking carelessly in a vehicle. Another one resulted out of the Luton Airport blaze. One of our vehicles was parked there and that was destroyed as a re result of that. But this is the normal occurrence of fire that you would expect. Nothing has been caused, at least from our data, as the result of any issue with an electric vehicle. For information, the Luton Airport fire was caused by a diesel Range Rover that was actually driving at the time from stuff I've read. A study by the Swedish Civil Contingency Agency backs up Tusker's findings. It concludes that EVs are 20 times less likely to catch fire than petrol or diesel cars. With data corroborated from a US insurer, the study found that EVs suffered 25 fires per 100,000 sold. Petrol or diesel vehicles were found to experience 1,530 fires per 100,000 vehicles sold, with hybrid vehicles at a notably higher risk of 3,475 per 100,000 vehicles. So from that data, hybrid vehicles are the biggest risk mainly because they've got petrol and, and dual engine systems and propulsion systems and everything's doubled up, I guess. Anyway, back to the main story. What has been kicking off in South Korea this week? At the start of the week, someone posted this video of an EV6 on fire in an underground parking garage in South Korea. This video appeared on a YouTube channel called Stage D Training. I think it's a fire safety thing in uh, the US. That car had been plugged in and AC charged it overnight. They managed to control the fire and move the car out of the car park without too much damage to the car park. But uh, you can see when it does go up, it's quite scary. Videos are worth a watch. Also, previously, days before, there had been a massive fire in an underground apartment parking lot in Incheon, in South Korea. This was also covered by the same YouTube channel. I put links above. This was caused by Mercedes-Benz EQE 350, which was involved in the Incheon fire and was equipped with a nickel cobalt manganese battery made by Pharisis, lesser known Chinese manufacturer. This car was not charged at the time. At, at the moment, the cause of this EV fire is unknown. The Korean government then advised in the interest of transparency that EV manufacturers should disclose their battery suppliers. Hyundai, Kia and Mercedes have already done this. I put links to stories where you can see who supplies the what and what goes into what models. As a result of this, in South Korea, both Hyundai and Kia began to offer free safety inspections to all owners of these EVs. The inspection will focus on several critical areas that could affect the safety and performance of EVs. Technicians will begin by checking the electrical installation ability to prevent unintended electrical paths that could cause short circuits or fires. They will then monitor the battery cells to ensure they charge and discharge evenly. Any significant deviation might indicate a faulty cell that could overheat, posing a fire risk. Next, the inspection will cover the EV's cooling system, essential for keeping the battery back at an optimal temperature. Overheating can reduce battery life and increase the risk of thermal runaway, a condition that could lead to a fire. Finally, technicians will examine all cables and connectors for any signs of damage or wear. Damaged connectors can cause electrical arcing, which is a potential fire hazard. And a Hyundai official said, we understand the concerns of our customers might have, and we're here to support them every step of the way to ensure that EVs are safe and reliable. They also said our vehicles already let owners choose a charging level between 50 and 100% in the AVN system. That's the hedge unit, the inf inf infotainment. 
We're thinking about making 90% the default to help with safety concerns, and we're planning to let drivers set these limits via a mobile app too. You we can already do that, <laughs> said a Hyundai Motor official. Will these safety checks be pushed out to the rest of the world? I don't really know. Depends how big this story blows up, I guess. Um, what can we actually do to mitigate the risks of leaving your EV charging overnight in an underground car park? I personally wouldn't do it, but this is what you can do based on the information I've found out. Also, according to the well-known Australian EV fire safety website, evfiresafe.com, 15% of EV battery fires occur whilst charging. So firstly, set your charge limiter to 80 to 90%. Secondly, you can reduce your AC charge rate to 60%. This charges the car more slowly and should reduce the heat buildup. Thirdly, if you run over any large object or curb at high speed, it's well worth getting your battery pack checked for damage by your dealer and also keep your car services up to date. My dealer does safety checks with the scheduled service. These are very important. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. That's all for now. Links to all stories and videos can be found in the show notes. Thanks for watching.